ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो नंबर थ्री चैप्टर नंबर एटीन टेक्स्ट नंबर सिक्सटीन टू नाइनटीन सिक्सटीन टू एटीन आई रीड माई सेल्फ नाइनटीन विल जॉइन टूगेदर पुनर्गतम स्वम आदा ब्रह्मा अभीक्षणश अभ्यवधरी क्रुद्ध संभा दष्टदक्षत translation the personality of god had now exhibited his anger and rushed to meet the demon who bit his lip in rage took up his mace again and beat and began to repeatedly brandish it about text 17 tatascha gada yar ratim dakshinayam ruvi prabhu ajagne satu tam somya gadaya kovido ahar translation Then with his mace the lord struck the enemy on the right of his brow but since the demon was expert in fighting o gentle vidura he protected himself by a maneuver of his own mace text 18 evam gada bhyam gurvi bhyam harak haryaksho harir evacha jigishaya susam rabdha anyonyam abiknah abiknatuh translation in this way the demon haryaksha and the lord the personality of god had struck each other with their huge maces each enraged and seeking his own victory text 19 tayo spridhor tadmag gada ahat agnay ho shata shrava grahana vibhida manavay ho विचित्र मार्गा चतरो जिगिष्यादिलायाव शुष्मिनोर्मृद ट्रांसलेशन एंड पर्पट बाय हिस्स डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शिल प्रभुपा ट्रांसलेशन देर वॉज कीन राइवलरी बिटवीन द टू कंबैटेंट्स both had sustained injuries on their bodies from the blow of each other pointed maces and each grew more and more enraged at the smell of the blood on his person in their eagerness to win they performed maneuvers of various kinds and the contest looked like an encounter between two forceful bulls for the sake of a cow perfect here the earth planet is called ila this earth was formerly known as ilavrata varsha and when maharaj parikshit ruled this earth it was called bharat varsha actually bharat varsha is a name for the entire planet but gradually bharat varsha has come to mean india as india has recently been divided into pakistan and hindustan similarly the earth was formerly called ilavrata varsha but gradually as time passed it was divided by national boundaries thus and sabakti vedanta purport so here in these verses the battle between lord bore that is <clears throat> and hirnaksha is being described there was keen rivalry between the two combatants both had sustained injuries on their bodies from the blows of each other pointed maces and each grew more and more enraged so in the previous verses we are seeing that how both the lord and hirnaksha was angry at each other even the lord became very angry the personality of god had now exhibited his anger and rushed to meet the demon who bit his lip in rage for someone who is totally new to krishna consciousness <clears throat> this can be bewildering how can the lord get angry krishna in the bhagavad gita himself says the three gates leading to hell lust anger and greed and here lord himself is getting angry this is you no know, jaisa achar and then prachar so here the lord is getting angry and grew more and more enraged at the smell of blood of his person 
in his eagerness to win, this we see, okay, from Hiranyaksha this can be expected, after all he was a demon. Eagerness to win, and Krishna also says, you have the right to do your duty, but do not be attached to the results. On one side the Lord says, control the senses, control the mind. From the very beginning, control the senses. And then he marries 16,100 queens. So people sometimes even ask this question. Why the Lord married so many queens? From their understanding, was he not satisfied with one, one wife? Why did he dance with the gopis? That's why Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says, Janma karma cha me divyam evam yoveti tattvataha. What meets our eyes is a superficial understanding. That's why Krishna says, Raj vidya, Raj guhyam. It's a most confidential knowledge. Tattvataha. Tattvata means in truth. What we can understand just by reading like a novel or a comic or any other book will not be tattvata understanding. It will not be the real understanding. That's why Krishna says, one who understands in tattvata, in truth, punarjanmana vidyate, he gets eligible for liberation from the cycle of birth and death. He goes back to the kingdom of God. So how do we understand why the Lord who is, and we also understand saintly people are expected to be tolerant, not get provoked. They should be peaceful. They should be equipoised. They should be forgiving. These are all qualities of devotees and Lord should also exhibit these qualities. And here we are seeing that the Lord is fighting and Lord is getting angry and is beating Hiranaksha and is eager to win, to defeat Hiranaksha. So how do we understand this? So as I mentioned, if we have not studied the scriptures in a parampara, a parampara understanding, just like Prabhupada is writing the purports, when we read those purports and understand them, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, all our misconceptions and wrong understandings slowly can get wiped away. Typical understanding is a saintly person means he should never get angry. That's why many times people say Hinduism, because of all this tolerance and ahimsa, that's why this Mohammedans invaded India and we were just simply tolerant and they ransacked the temples, destroyed the temples. And we were all talking about Ahimsa, we should be tolerant. Actually that's not the correct understanding. Wherever anger is required, it has to be exhibited. Wherever Ahimsa is required, it has to be done. The whole Bhagavad Gita was spoken by Lord to Arjuna to inspire him to fight. Sometimes it can be bewildering what to tolerate, what not to tolerate, when to get angry and when not to get angry. There's a very famous quote which says, not to get angry is very easy. If someone decides I'll not get angry, relatively it's easy. A stone also does not get angry. But to get angry at the right time, in the right circumstances, on the right person, to the right degree, is not very easy. In other words, there is place of anger, there is place for every emotion. The emotions what we exhi exhibit originally is there in the Lord. Lord is a person and person means emotions, feelings. And every emotion has a place, just like Hanuman got angry and he burned the Lanka. He was a great devotee of the Lord. Everyone worships Hanuman. 
as a great devotee of the Lord. And he got angry and he burned the Lanka. And still we glorify him, still we worship him. And still we accept him as a great devotee of the Lord. So many times people have a very superficial understanding of our scriptures. In fact, many people who come up with these arguments may not have even read the scriptures. Or if they would have read, they would have read very superficially some thing written by some author and they miss out the correct understanding. <clears throat> One time there was a family who was visiting Afghanistan, Indian family. They had gone to meet some of their friends and acquaintances. So, <clears throat> they were visiting Afghanistan for the first time and as you all know, it's an area which is strive with lot of terrorism, lot of violence. So this family was going in a car and suddenly they were stopped on the highway. And two men with guns stopped the car and said, come out. So they were completely, you know, panic stricken, fearful. What's going to happen? Fearful of death. Imagine on a highway, deserted highway, somebody stops the car and comes with a gun. So their heart started pounding. So anyway, they had no option. They came out of the car and the so-called terrorist asked that person, what is your religion? So this person, although he was Hindu from Indian, from India but fearful that they are not going to spare if he says I am a Hindu so he spontaneously says I am a Muslim so the terrorist how can he believe look like Indian look like so he said can you recite a verse from Quran so this person is a Hindu, how does he know Quran? Viva voice, they say, no? Just to test your knowledge. <clears throat> so this person, you know, where does he remember Quran? He started Yada Yada Hi Dharma Glanir Bhavati Bharata. Somehow spontaneously spoke out that verse. And the terrorist, okay, okay, go. So he got into the car and went off. So when they started off, the wife said, Hey, why did you say you are a Muslim? And he asked you to quote Quran and you said, Yada Yada, you quoted a verse from the Bhagavad Gita. Why did you do that? He said, had he read Quran, he wouldn't be a terrorist. It's a fact that many times people who are fighting in the name of religion, in fact you ask anybody, I ask this question quite often, how many of you feel that today the world is in chaos because of religion? 95% of people raise their hands. I have asked this question in many many gatherings, many many forums. How many of you feel that today because of, in the name of religion people are fighting, the world is in a mess. If you look objectively also, all the fights which are going on in Syria, in Afghanistan, Iraq, all these things, it's all stemming from, you know, religious faiths, differences, Israel, Palestine. So how many of you feel that the world is in chaos because of religion? Everyone, except for few people, they raise their hands. People see that People are fighting in the name of religion. Religion which is supposed to bring about peace, harmony, universal brotherhood, actually is doing just the opposite. India got divided, like Prabhupada says in the Prabhupada. Earlier it was all Bharat Varsha. It got divided in the name of religion. 
Hindustan and Pakistan. People are seeing that countries are getting divided, countries are fighting in the name of religion. Actually the fact is, it is not because of religion. It's because of fanatic understanding of religion. Where do people have tattvata understanding? First and foremost, people have not read the Bhagavad Gita, not read the Quran, not read the Bible. Even if they have read the Bible or Quran or whatever it is, it is superficial understanding. Just like if you read and don't understand in parampara, what is the understanding we are getting? The Lord is getting angry. And anybody can justify that, anybody can get angry because we are following, we are devotees of the Lord. So what has happened is, people with vested interest have fanned the religious sentiments of ignoble people, gullible people, ignorant people, people who are jobless, people who are illiterate, and has created chaos in the whole thing. Many of the so-called jihadis, they may be illiterate otherwise. Just like we had that terrorist attack in India. They were paid some amount, the family would be paid few lakhs of rupees and you know, they were asked to participate in this jihad. So, <clears throat> in one sense it's a very sorry state of affairs, but the result is not that you do away with religion. It says, just like a cataract, when the eyes have cataract and the vision becomes blurred, the solution is not to pluck out the eyes. Na rahega bans, na bajegi bansuri. They say, pluck out the eyes, no more cataract, no more blur vision. But that's not the solution. You remove the cataract and your vision is restored. So dharma or religion has a very important place because it helps us lead a meaningful life. Without dharma, it is nothing but polished animalism. So, when we understand in, in parampara, we are fortunate to understand from a bona fide spiritual master, we can get a clear understanding and not get bewildered when we read such things. Prabhupada says, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became angry. Although he says, Trinad api suni chena taror api sahisnuna amani na mana dena. Amani na mana dena. One who does not reserve respect also, Mahanadena, respect, tolerant than a tree. Humbler than a blade of grass, anybody tramples, it just stands up. Tree, you cut it, it gives you wood. You shake it, it gives you fruits. Tolerant, does not repel back. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is preaching that, He's saying, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became angry with the miscreant brothers Jagai and Madai who blasphemed and struck Nityananda Prabhu. In his Sistashtaka, Lord Chaitanya wrote, Trinad api suni chena taror api sahisnuna. One should be humbler than the grass and more tolerant than the tree. One may then ask, why the Lord exhibited his anger? The same thing here. On Lord one side is saying three gates leading to hell and other side you know, he himself is getting angry. Lord Chaitanya is saying humbler than a blade of grass and then he is becoming angry and Jagai and Madai. The point is that one should be ready to tolerate all insults to one's own self. This is the principle. Sometimes we can also get bewildered. No, no, we should get angry. Little bit somebody provoke angry and justify Lord also got angry. The principle is, the point is that one should be ready to tolerate all insults to one's own self. My ego gets hurt, I should tolerate. Somebody sp speaks something, I feel bad, I feel bad, I tolerate. I become provoked, I tolerate. One should be ready to tolerate all insults to one's own self 
but when Krishna or his pure devotee is blasphemed, a genuine devotee becomes angry and acts like fire against the offenders. Here, Mother Earth, she is also a devotee, and Hiranaksha and the Lord, just like Lord Chaitanya, became angry. Jagai and Madai, they hit Nityananda Prabhu, and the Lord became angry. So every emotion has a place, but with the right knowledge, tattvata understanding, we can have a proper understanding where and when to apply that emotion. Just like Krishna says, dharma avrito kama asmi, even kama has a place. Dharma avirudho, like that, all emotions, it's, if it is not dharma avirudho, in the sense if it is in line with dharmic principles, have a place. If you always remember Krishna by your activities and seeing Krishna everywhere, even in the heart of demoniac persons, then anger will never overcome you. Now how do we tolerate? Suppose somebody is, you know, provoking us, is making our life miserable or is speaking some sarcastic words and I am getting affected. So the solution is, if you are always remembering Krishna and seeing Krishna everywhere, even in the heart of demoniac people, then anger will never overcome you. Being purified of false pride, many times we get angry because of false pride, because of ego. And then we justify that so and so is responsible for my anger. Actually, if we look introspect, it is because our ego got hurt. Our self-respect, our esteem got affected. What will people think about me? But occasionally, if there is good reason, you may have to become angry just to chastise the evildoers and blasphemers. So especially when we are young, we will require some guidance. Superficial understanding is not to, not to get angry. So Prabhupada says, if there is good reason, you may have to become angry just to chastise the evildoers and blasphemers. Because we are living in a material world where everyone is, is in one sense diseased. Everyone has ego, everyone has pride, everyone is there to put down others. So sometimes we may have to get angry to chastise the evildoers and the blasphemers. Anger can be controlled. We cannot stop anger altogether. But if we simply become angry with those who blaspheme the Lord or the devotees of the Lord, we can control our anger in Krishna consciousness. When insignificant persons use rough words to cast false, angry accusations against saintly persons, their fruitless words do not disturb the great personalities. So if it is, mind you here, angry accusations against saintly person, personal attack, just like here it is said, all insults to one's own self, saintly persons, they do not get disturbed. They act like Trinadapi Suni Chena Tarurapi Sahisuna. But when required, evildoers, blasphemers, blasphemers of devotee, blasphemers of the Lord, they have the right to become angry. They should become angry. Sometimes when we are living in day to day life, we will get upset. We will get somebody will speak some things bit critical unnecessarily will pass some remarks as you said we all are conditioned souls we are not pure devotees where we have risen above all this so when now here it is said a saintly person should tolerate should not get disturbed now what if we get disturbed we will get disturbed only when our consciousness has risen to a certain level when we advance in Krishna conscious saintly person great personalities we will not be affected suppose somebody has insulted us and we get angry we get affected 
we get worked up and the result of that is many times we can either retaliate or sometime if it is let's say a senior devotee or somebody else we can't retaliate deep within we have grudges hatred ill feeling can't do anything but then inside keep brewing anger hatred in fact it is said that if a devotee has that kind of a consciousness he is hurting himself so how to keep our heart clean we will get affected we will get so to say somebody insults us somebody speaks harsh words one time i went out to meet somebody many years back when i used to go out for life membership so we went to a donor's place and i was telling him he had agreed to become a member and i was supposed to go and collect the membership amount he was ready he was having a check book in his hand he was about to write the check and i was sitting i took out the receipt book and the person sitting next to me his friend he was also there in his office so that person said what do you do whole day so i told him that we get up in the morning and we have the sadhana and then we have different services and all that then that person suddenly switched tone and said do you know what is a parasite so it took me some time to understand what is he up to he said i understand do you know what is a parasite i said yeah i understand how are you different from a parasite he asked parasite is basically a person a parasite in a body lives on the other person's blood or other person's this thing so what he was trying to indicate is that you know, we are parasites we don't do any meaningful work we beg we just do little bit of ringing the bell while our time and beg people and live at the cost of others so moment i heard that how are you different from parasite i became angry So how can you call us and i tried justifying you know no you don't know how much we are building a big temple it's a public temple so many people will come temple is required and all this thing while all this anger discussion was going on the person took the check book and kept it inside the drawer and then says so swami ji will see later on that's it people don't expect that saintly person should get provoked and lose temper that's a natural understanding and in one sense that's the understanding which people have but we cannot go to her extreme now here this was a blasphemy to me how are you different from a parasite ideal would have been to just tolerate just after all he is ignorant he has his own understanding of who the devotees are maybe he is an atheist simply tolerate and somehow without offending him lord service should happen somehow intelligently if had added he would have even given the check so sometimes we will get affected so to say we will get uh, <clears throat> momentarily lose our temper because we are conditioned souls we are not pure devotees but the worst thing is we brew anger within us we stop talking to someone like here it says the lips in rage he bit his lip in rage took up his mace again and began to repeatedly brandish you know anger anger within so it is said that for a devotee it is very important to also cultivate a quality and that quality is shama shama means forgiveness just like here it says if one remembers that the lord seeing krishna everywhere even in the heart of a demoniac person the person who has insulted you 
if we are Krishna conscious, genuine Krishna conscious, anger will not overcome you. Being purified of all false pride. <clears throat> so it is said that sometimes when people have to catch monkeys, wild monkeys in jungles, they take cages and they put it in the forest and inside the cages they put something which the monkeys like. We all know monkeys like bananas and so big big bananas, bunches they will keep inside those cages and they leave them in wild forest. What they expect is that once the monkeys come inside the cage to eat the bananas and they will drop the lever and the cage will get closed. So the monkeys, one or two times they got trapped, but you know, we all learn from experience, monkeys also that way quite shrewd. So the monkeys saw that, you know, this is a trap for us. So instead of going inside the cage to eat the bananas, they came on the side of the cage, put the hand inside the cage, and they were trying to take the bananas. So that even if the lever goes in, they will get the bananas also without getting trapped. But then it so happened that people started observing, those who had put those cages, the monkeys would hold big big bananas in their hand, will try to pull it out, but the cage ribs were there, the bars were there, they won't be able to pull out the banana because bananas were quite big. And they are desperate to eat the bananas and they will not leave the bananas. Trying, 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 somehow not leaving the banana and finally they will be caught. So the learning from this is, just like the monkeys, they can go free if they just drop the banana. So likewise, many times, we just tightly hold on to that anger, resentment, hatred, ill feeling against someone. We have to let go. We will be peaceful. We have to also analyze, most of the time, that hatred, ill feeling is because I have got insulted. Somebody has hurt me. All of us are conditioned souls. We all are diseased. Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. Everyone is acting in the lower modes. We all get overpowered. Drop it. We will momentarily get angry. Beg forgiveness, ask forgiveness, let go. Keep your heart clean. Keep your consciousness clean. So if we have that, now, having said that, we have to avoid the other extreme. Other extreme is, every time let go. If the Lord and His devotees are blasphemed, we have to get angry. If I get insulted, I tolerate. If unknowingly, unintentionally, in spite of this thing, I get provoked, I get angry, I use harsh words, I beg forgiveness. I let go. So we'll stop here. Granth Raj, Shrimad Bhagavatam ki, Shila Prabhupada.